I want to talk for a second about materials and how you can apply those to your model. Now there's actually two different classifications here. We have appearances and we have materials. When you're talking about a model like this, a car or any product that you're trying to design, you're typically going to be talking about appearances. When you're talking about making a model for simulation, if you're trying to get an accurate representation of the material on the screen and you have something that's a machine part or a fabricated part, you're typically going to add materials. Now there are two distinctions here. When you apply a material, the material by default will give an appearance on the outside of the part. For instance, if you apply an aluminum material to your part or a brass material or a copper material, it will change the color and appearance of the part based on the appearance that's set in that file. If you apply an appearance to a material, it's only the outside facade of the surface that you're dealing with. Now, the main distinction here is a material will give you things like mass property, any technical data that you need to do simulation, figure out what the yield strength is, and so on, where an appearance will just be the visualization of it. So in this video, we're going to talk about appearances and not materials, but I just want to make that distinction that appearances won't give you things like mass property or any technical data on the materials, or appearances, even if you place something like an aluminum appearance or a chrome appearance, you don't get any of that technical data, but you get what the thing's going to look like. So on the car, there is something that we need to be concerned with when we're talking about appearances in an assembly as opposed to appearances in a part. And to sort of visualize that, I'm going to expand the display pane, and I want to take a look at the materials column in here. So you'll notice that in here, it actually gives us a small triangle, and it shows you the material that's applied to that specific part. Now, in this case, the material that's applied to the Camaro body mirror is this black high-gloss plastic. But if you try to apply a material at the assembly level, it's going to apply it to the entire component. And by default, you'll notice that it's going to silver. That color is going to be applied to every component within that file. And there are many, many solid bodies and surface bodies directly in that file. You'll notice under selected geometry, you have an option to apply at the part document level. Now, when you do this, you can apply it at the part, a face, surfaces, bodies, and features. Now, this is an important distinction because look at the difference on the screen. Now, the material is applied to the specific body panels, but it's not applied to things like the windows, the tail lights, the marker lights on the side, the grill. All that stuff came back to the original appearance. If I go back to the component level, you can see that it changes exactly how things are looking. Now, there's a good reason for this. And I'm going to X out of this, and I'm going to left click on the 2010 Camaro body mirror, and I'm going to go to open part. When we go into the part level, you notice that we have 59 surface bodies, 20 solid bodies. All of these have materials applied to them. If we expand the display pane, you notice at the top level, the entire part file has this black high gloss plastic material applied to it. But if we go over to our display manager, you notice that in the history tree, there are a lot more materials in here. So basically how I did this file was I applied the material I wanted for the painted surfaces on the car all of the black bodies in this specific instance that I wanted to be representative of the painted surfaces were applied at the entire part level, the component level. And this is a very handy trick when you're dealing with a part that is as complex as a car body. Now inside here, I applied things like glossy rubber to areas around the windows, the sill trims. There's a high gloss plastic that goes around the windshield. There's a clear glass for the side and the back. There's some high gloss plastic for other areas of the body polycarb plastic. Now everything here is applied to the left side and it's mirrored over. So when the body was mirrored over, all those appearances were carried over. Polycarb plastic for the tail light or for the side light on the back. We have reflective blue glass on the front. We have mirror on the actual mirror face. So all these materials are applied individually to whether they're individual surfaces, solid bodies, whatever the case might be. They're all applied to those areas. And the reason it's done like this is because when we apply material at the assembly level, we want to make sure that we're applying it to the component. So that it applies it to this body. And then all the rest of the materials that apply inside of this body are going to carry down the line. So we can change the material here, or we can go back to our assembly. We can change the appearance of this, and we can just make sure that we apply it at the part document level. So then you can see now we can look through all the glass pieces, the taillights are red again, the marker lights orange. And that way, any material that we apply here is going to allow us to simply apply it to the main part in SOLIDWORKS part file, and then have all the rest of the stuff take care of itself. 
So we had a high gloss plastic and I did that because it looked pretty good in the renders. So you can come in, you can choose another high gloss plastic or you can expand this and you can go down to, for instance, painted car and you can select another material, for instance, a white painted car or a gold painted car. The Sienna is actually a pretty nice color in renders and so on. Now these are really tough appearances to deal with and a lot of times you have to go into the advanced options and start tweaking them. But just a quick rundown on what we're looking at here. When we're in the basic tab, you have two colors here. And this is basically the dominant color and the secondary color. Now in this case, the secondary color is what's called the specular spread. And this is what it's gonna look like when light hits the part. So you see we're sort of shaded on this side, shaded on the front, but the sunlight that's hitting the hood is showing that lighter color. The color is all chosen down here and we can determine if we want it to be applied at different display states. We go to advanced, we have a little bit more control over this. At the color image section, again, we have control over the color of the model, but we also have control over things like illumination. Now illumination allows several different things to happen. Now by default, I would highly recommend that as a new user, you turn on dynamic help. This is very handy because when you hover over boxes, you get a tool tip to the right hand side. It gives you some idea what the slider is gonna do. All the way to the left, the intensity of light on the surface drops. All the way to the right, it gets brighter. When we go down to specular amount, you can see that all the way to the left, it basically is absorbing all the light. All the way to the right, it gives you that sort of shiny reflection you get if you had sunlight shining down on an object. We have the specular color. This is the color that's gonna show when the sunlight or ambient light hits. And going down the line, you can see we have specular spread and blurriness, reflection, this is for real view only. So if the part was a little too shiny on the screen, we could turn this amount down to really make it a little bit more dull. Blurry reflections, transparency amount, luminous intensity is how much light it gives out. If you wanna make your own material that emits light, for instance, the side marker lights, you can apply a clear material, allow it to emit some light. And then we also have things like surface finish and mapping. So there's a lot of control when you go to the advanced tab over these materials. Let's go ahead and hit okay and take a look at our model. So you'll notice that again, in this sort of display area that we have this triangle that's sort of cutting this material in half. If we go back to the part level, to the body, you notice that it's showing the entire thing. So there is a very different way to approach materials inside of an assembly and inside of a specific part file. Now, the reason it's displayed like this is because of something called display states. Now I'll talk about display states in a later chapter when we talk about configurations and adding configurations. But in a display state, you can control the appearance, whether or not components are hidden or shown. That allows you to do things like apply materials for specific display states. And that's why it's displayed like this. And again, I'll talk about that when we get into the section talking about configurations. It'll make a little bit more sense, but I just want you to know that's why you see that sort of triangle section cutting the material in half. So now, one other quick thing about materials. There are a few different ways that you can apply materials. And to do that, I'm gonna to go to another example. We're gonna open the machine part design. Now the machine part design, you'll notice in the tree, there's no material specified. If we right click on this and we edit the material or we apply something that's already in here, for instance, brass, you can see on the screen, it changes the appearance. Let's go ahead and turn real view graphics off. And you can see that it changed the color of the appearance and we have that brass material applied. So this gives us things like mass property. So we can actually go into tools. We can go into measure under evaluate and go into mass properties. So inside here, we now get things like the density of the material, the mass of our part, we get volume and surface area and all these things come in no matter what. But by applying our material, we now get a mass property of our part. If we wanted to apply an appearance, we can go over to the right hand side and to appearances, scenes and decals and we could grab something and simply drag it onto our part. And you'll notice that as soon as we let go of the cursor, we have this pop-up window. It allows us to apply it to a face, a feature, a body, the entire part, and we can use some appearance filters. If you check this little pin unpin dialog, it'll keep this on the screen and allow you to select things. Let's go ahead and apply it to a face. Now, when we apply it to a face, if I select the face, from my quick context menu that pops out, we have some appearance options here as well. We have a drop down, and you'll notice that the appearance applied to the overall body is that brass material, but we've also overridden that by applying this Sienna material to a specific face. We can delete it from here, 
We also have some other options. We can remove it in this instance or all instances that contain that material. If we go back to our flyout window, you notice that we also have some other options, copy appearance and paste appearance. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this appearance. Then I'm gonna select a face on the side and I'm gonna paste it. And again, when you paste it, you get this sort of pop-up window that allows you to paste it to a face, a feature, a body, the whole part, or use some appearance filters. Now in this case, notice the difference on the screen. The face we selected, it'll apply to. If we select feature, it goes to the entire extruded feature with the exception of the fillets because those were applied at a different time, the entire body or the entire part. So very handy way that we can do this and we can keep on pasting these appearances. Now, if we pin this dialog, move it wherever you want, you see that it keeps this sort of face option here. So when we come in here and we paste, it automatically goes to whatever our selection is. If we select feature, then that allows us to apply it to a feature. So if there's an extrude or evolve, a fillet, whatever the case might be, we can paste an appearance to all of those. So for instance, if we grab this, we paste an appearance, it'll paste it to all of the features that belong to that. We can unpin the dialog box and go back. Now, if we wanna remove all the appearances, we can either go to our appearances tab or expand the display pane, find the appearance where it was applied, for instance, the specific part, or expand the solid bodies, or go to the entire part file, select it and remove the appearance. Now, if you've applied it manually to faces, for instance, all these faces, we applied some brass material to these corners, we need to go into the appearance section and manually remove them. Now, there's one more thing that I do wanna talk about, and that's the hierarchy of appearances. If we go back to the part and we apply appearance at the part level. For instance, let's go ahead and go into plastic, let's go into a clear plastic, and just go ahead and do a translucent plastic. This makes it a little bit easier to understand the differences between the entire part and faces. When we talk about the hierarchy of appearances, if we select a face and we go to appearance, we have this hierarchy here. We have faces, features, bodies, and the entire part. When you apply a material to the entire part, it encompasses all of the geometry in the part. If there's multiple bodies, surfaces, whatever the case is, it grabs them all. If you apply them to an individual body, that will override any appearances that you've applied to the whole file. Same thing with features, same thing with faces. So even though the clear material is applied to the overall file, anything that we did to a specific feature, for instance this, you'll notice that fillet 2 has a material next to it, or anything that we've done to a specific face, for instance this face here, that'll all override the appearance of the entire part. So keep that in mind when you start applying appearances to your files, that there is a hierarchy there, and if you wanna make sure that you have material on a specific face, or if you want a material on a specific section of your part, you need to make sure that you do that appropriately.